for bigger use. Currently, is, are there any special technologies being used that um, help with all this? Yes, I mean, um, with the onset of AI and, and the Internet of Things, um, for instance, let me narrow down to rotating equipment. So we can deploy sensors on our assets here in Ghana. Let's say the, the three FPSOs that are on the seas of um, Ghana, our engines power them. Mm -hmm. So we can deploy sensors on these engines and we remotely monitor them. Mm -hmm. So constantly as it's running, we are gathering data on the performance and we are able to advise our clients on certain preventive um, mechanisms in terms of, well, these pressures are going high or these temperatures are going high, and it's real time. So we are able to, so we, we have a nice center in Florence in Italy where when we deploy these technology on, 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 the, on our assets, we are able to monitor them 24 hours and give you uh, data or analytics that will help you improve the operations of these assets. So that's one. We also have um, what we call, now I think it's not yet out, but the government will come at it. We, uh, is leak detection and repair systems, okay? So you are able to clone, let's say, if you are the Ghana gas plant, as processing, I see rivers in here, so I'm talking about Ghana gas. So you'll be able to clone the whole um, installation and then monitor it. So that the moment there is a leak, you can inform the client and say, do you have a leak on valve A or on this pipe section? So then you deploy the repair mechanisms that needs to be. So quickly, again, you are, able, you are able to protect the environment because you've been able to detect the leak where on the, let's say currently, if you don't have such a system, it will take some time and imagine the, uh, the losses to the company, the impact on the environment that such a leakage would have caused. So yes, these are some of the few um, areas that Baker Hughes works on to, to, to improve, I mean, leveraging on technology to, to improve the efficiency of our clients. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for Daniel. So Daniel, I'd, I'd hit you again one last time before, before we move on. Um, assuming I'm a student who is very excited about all that you're telling us and um, all the new technology we're hearing about. Um, we're hearing about AI, we're hearing about IoT, Internet of Things. I want an opportunity in that space. I'm hearing so much about it as a student and I don't know how I can take advantage of this. How do I find my place on that line? Your mindset, right? You narrow down to the space you want to play in. And if it's AI, if it's uh, uh, the Internet of Things, currently I think the students now are so fortunate because we live in a global, uh, with the Internet. I, I wonder what they use their data for, you know? <laughs> Because if, if I don't understand, I had a challenge, again, let me allude to this experience. I had a challenge with my suitcase. Um, I locked it and forgot the combination when I was returning from the US on one of my trips. So I was there, and then I went onto the internet, YouTube. And then and I just typed how to unlock Samsonite bag, blah, blah, blah. And the solution came. I just <laughs> yeah. watched it. And then I implemented it, and it worked. And I was so happy because I haven't finished packing, and now the luggage is locked. So as trivial as this uh, example is, if you want to get into a space, the internet is there. Read on it, spend time, read on it. Identify, if you read on it, most of the material you find there are maybe produced from the West or developed countries. Then you narrow it down. Definitely you find somebody locally I mean, how you were able to find me? I, be, I believe we're using the internet. So then you narrow down to the person, find ways and means, and go on the social media space, find somebody who definitely know somebody in that space. Then you try and understand how that sp space works. 
I think what the students of today don't do much is trying to understand how systems work. Okay? Spend time to understand how systems work. And within that system, find a space where to position yourself. Because if you look at, I, I use that a lot when I'm interviewing um, potential employees. You need to narrow down to the impact you want to give. Okay, in the, I mean, if you find yourself in the a multinational like I am, which we have over 50,000 employees, you can get lost and not know what you bring to the table. And that, that is doomed for you because each and every person has a role to play. So if you identify what you can bring, it will be easier to, 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 to chart a path in, 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 in that career space that you, you choose. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I'm back here to Peter. Peter, from all that uh, Daniel is telling us, it seems it's all up to us. The opportunities are out there. I mean, research, find it, identify where you want to be. But in the EV space, do you think there are prospects um, in the near future locally that can be considered? Um. There's really nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. This, all of the technology is being, is being developed, is being perfected elsewhere, but is being done from their context, from the challenges that they face mm -hmm. in their markets. So all we need to do is to basically partner, um, work with these other institutions or uh, the entities to basically develop solutions for us using existing technology. Because if you try to develop something from scratch, the resources that it takes, in most cases, we don't have. And where we have it, we may lack the, the local expertise uh, to be able to get it to that level in, in the amount of time that it requires. So we need to focus on re-engineering existing technology to solve our challenges as locally. OK, I, th I think the central thing you said here, which um, I just want to reiterate to the fact that most of the opportunities are created from challenges. You're saying in the West, they've answered to the problems they have. So same way, identify the challenges. Um, in a developing world, there are just too many challenges. That means there's, there are just too many business opportunities, right? Yes, but we, we have a propensity to just take something from there and want to dump it here. And or that just doesn't work. go buy something and come sell it here. Mm -hmm. And that is it's, it's the, the easy thing to do, but it's, it's short-sighted. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is we end up not benefiting from what it truly, what the, all of the benefits that come from that product could be. So we need to look at how we can re- just, you're going to take the technology and you're going to bring it here. Localize but that, it. Yeah, local, localize the solution. As simple as that. So in doing that, you create sectors. You build, like we build our own repair shops. We do things as opposed to if we just bring the car without thinking about everything else, when the car breaks down, then what? So th these are the things that we, we have to, to look at um, as part of our finding solutions, um, at, at least as it pertains to the sector that I, I, I'm in. 